Hi, and welcome to Gym and Kitchen. I'm your host, Shona. Gym and Kitchen's focus is on creating a healthy lifestyle, and I am passionate about educating and coaching real people with busy lives on all things health and wellness related, including the habits and beliefs that govern our food and fitness choices, and that's what this show is all about. You can find Gym and Kitchen on the web, Facebook, and Instagram at gymandkitchen.biz. Gym and Kitchen is produced bi-weekly and airs every second Thursday on YouTube. Thanks for watching! Today's episode is very exciting for me. On today's episode, I am interviewing a former colleague and instructor by the name of Ryan Delaney. I first met Ryan in 2012 or 2013 when I was in personal trainer school and he was teaching one of the modules that I needed in order to complete the program. We got along immediately and he was the one who encouraged me to study for the National Strength and Conditioning Association or the NSCA test. Ryan himself is a certified personal trainer and also holds the prestigious title of being a TSAC trainer, which stands for Tactical Strength and Conditioning through the NSCA. Ryan is a kettlebell instructor and has also completed two mentorships from EXOS, which was formerly known as Athletes Performance. Ryan is one of the trainers I look up to the most. He is one of the most energetic and real people that I know, and I am so happy to have him on the show. During our conversation, I focused on the fitness and training aspect of things. However, Ryan was also recently interviewed by Daniela on Because Everyone Has a Story, about his story of resilience and his background and his life before fitness. It's a fascinating interview and it's wonderful. If you want to know more about what he did before he found his calling as a personal trainer, I highly recommend you go and check out that podcast as well and that will be pinned in the comments for you. Please enjoy this conversation with Ryan Delaney. Ryan, welcome. Welcome to the show. I am so excited. Welcome to Gym and Kitchen. Um, thank you for indulging me and agreeing to be on the show and have me ask you a million questions. I am I'm super, super looking forward to this. Um, where do where do we even begin? Um, I'm trying to think when we met. Let's well, I, think I, probably I, think 20, I want to start with that one. Yeah, 2012, 2013, I think. I think so too. Um, how long have you been a personal trainer at that point? At that point, I guess it was about six or seven years. So okay. entered it very late in life. Uh, but I've been teaching for, when I met you, I'd been teaching for InShape, the company I teach for. Oh, I guess about two or three years. It hadn't been that long when we met. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So when, I know you, I know you did come to personal training late in life, but I also know that you were no stranger to the gym when you, when you came to it. Do you, do you remember when you ever set foot in a gym and do you remember there being anything remarkable about it or was it just something you did well it yeah. i always tried to keep in shape i always walked a lot but you know we were talking about so much stuff you know before we started this recording i was growing up because i'm dyslexic so i was never really good at sports or anything like that because i you know i'm really uncoordinated i you you, you tell me to catch a ball you know it'll hit me in the head i'll stare at the thing and so I have no sense of direction or anything like that. So I just assumed I wasn't good. It wasn't until much later I realized that I'm as strong as an ox. And, you know, that's, we'll probably get into that a little bit later. But I always kept, like, I always walked everywhere. I always, uh, I swam. You know, I always I always did something. Uh, walking especially. Um, which, by the way, the most underrated magic pill of all, if you want to get somebody fit. Just walk. Um so, you know, I'd go to the gym and I'd screw around. And I didn't really have an idea. You know, you see stuff in a magazine. I'm talking pre-internet, right? And so kind of aimless, but I always tried to maintain a level of fitness. I was always interested in nutrition. I was going to ask you what made you start going to the gym, but I think you answered that already, is that you you discovered you were strong as an ox. Did you did you have any friends to help you out with that? Did you, aside from what you could find in the magazines, and I, I remember the magazines, they still make them, but it's mostly online now. 10 yeah. ways to get fit or five ways to up your biceps. Hey, do you want to gain muscle? Do you like, yeah, you know, that kind of thing, right? You know, I definitely had some of those. I remember buying the Harley Pasternak book. Oh, Harley like, Pasternak. One of time. Oh, like, yeah, it was only a couple while. years before I became a trainer. Um, because like Good you, book. I've just always been active and into fitness. And it was actually not a bad book. Like if I look at it now, there's certainly some things that I might it's do differently. It's not a bad book. But it was a great place to start and certainly gave me like sort of the next level from what I'd been doing. So that was kind of nice. Well, you tie into the thing and I guess, you know, we kind of get into that. So what made the switch to make me pursue, you know, in my early 40s, like going to this career? Now, 
I have told this story many, many times, and but it is the honest truth is I was in another career. I was doing very well. I'd go to the gym and do my thing. And how do I put this? Because, you know, when we're looking about what we want to talk about, it goes into that whole other level. Um, now, I'm not a religious person or spiritual, but I do and have always felt that there's something beyond us. Now, this makes sense. you got to stay with me on this for a bit. Um, I One of the things that I firmly believe is that people come into your life for a reason in many, many cases. I really believe that. And somebody crossed my path that would change everything. And uh, a very close friend of mine actually had drinks with them on Saturday um, who just changed everything because I started asking questions about weight training. I've never seen anybody that built in my life. And I started asking questions and it just kind of snowballed from there. And um, if I had never met this person, this is the honest truth. If I had never met this person, I would not be sitting here talking to you today. Well, I'm so glad you met that person. You've been a big part of my fitness journey, as you know. And so it's, and it's super fun to, to hear your stories now from how you got from joining the fitness industry really in your 40s to, to where you are now. So you kind of answered this, but I want to kind of come back to it. Where, where did your career as a personal trainer really start? It started where, right with what I just told you. Okay. And where has it gone since then? Okay. Well, after me, this person who the, the most important thing in this, you know, if I ever write an autobiography, this will be a major part of it. Um, I guess the biggest thing that someone just kind of showing up on your path did was it helped me discover a part of myself that I, again, the honest truth here, it helped me discover a part of myself that I never, ever knew was there. Like I said, I wasn't good at sports because I was you know, uncoordinated. But this person helped me find this this part of me that I didn't know existed. And I'm telling the honest truth, I would never have found it if this person hadn't been in my life. It's very true. And um, so I discovered this, forgive my language, but asshole drill sergeant, whatever, this other side. You can, you can swear on the show. It's okay. I can swear on the show. Okay, this <laughs> asshole drill show. sergeant. Okay. Or this whole other thing, the more came out, and it would never have been found if if it if it hadn't been for for this person coming into my life. Um, and I've often been told I give this person far too much credit for the changes in my life, but sorry, it's the truth. And a wonderful friend of mine became a wonderful friend, still is very close friend. Um, can't really say what they do for a living, but I'll leave it with let's just say first responder. Awesome. And well, very high ranking. That's a that's a hard job to have, and those. Yeah, we can talk about that, but yeah. Anyway, so we, we can we can riff on that for hours once we're offline. <laughs> so that started my journey. It was a curiosity. It was like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then I started spending more time in the gym, and then I kind of had my midlife crisis. I guess around 42, 43. and mine was mild. And it was kind of like, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? I'd had a career. I'd had everything and in, in the previous broadcast if you listen to it i talk about like going going from the starting all over again and mm -hmm. having to regroup and and decide what i really wanted to do and i decided that i wanted to do this and when i made that decision that i wanted to do this there was no plan b it was all or nothing and i succeeded beyond anything i could ever have imagined but it was that the belief in doing this was so strong that nothing was going to shake me. And again, talking about, you know, I'm not a spiritual religious, but I really think if you think that you really want to do something, opportunities will manifest. Well, how come more people aren't successful? That's simply because opportunities are wearing overalls and look like work. Sometimes we set the bar too low and we trip over it. And that's. Oh, I like that saying. I'm going to steal yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, I heard that years ago from somebody when I was still teaching group fitness in Edmonton. I heard that from uh, from one of the guys that was great, teaching. That, it. I like that. Great yeah. Yeah. So I decided and I, I worked incredibly hard, but I said yes. And I say this to my students when I teach a course. You say yes to almost, not everything, but almost everything in the first year. You, If you make 20 bucks teaching a bunch of seniors in a rickety old gym, you do it. You got to get up. A, you do it. You go volunteer. You do anything you can to 
to get the experience, to get your name out there, you pay your dues. And I did. I took every opportunity that was given to me. And one of those opportunities led to me getting hired at the Olympic Oval. And I remember asking you when I had finished my training, where, what can I do to start? Where can, can you point me in the right direction? Is there some place I can volunteer? And of course I went to, pointed me to one of the gyms in Vancouver that you'd been involved with. And I went there and I thought I was just going to go in and, you know, do some volunteering for me, for them. And they hired me. I'm yeah, still that's what happened to me. That yeah. that happened. And, and that was a really great experience. They were happy to take me on as a junior trainer and, and put me through a mentorship program. So, and, so thank you for that. And because I'm sure you said that exact same thing to me, just do it all. Do it all. Yeah, it's true. And that's the difference between success and failure in this industry. And by the way, it, it's a really great point. And this has happened. So I've been with in shape for, oh, I guess 11, 12, going into 12 years now. Okay. And one of the things I, when we did the programs in person and stuff, and it's like, look, if you want to volunteer, I only have to make a phone call and you know, the rest is up to you. If you want to do it, very few, if ever take me up on it. Now you're talking about, I know you've done teaching and I know you hold a number of different certifications. We'll come back to the teaching aspect in a minute. Uh, you were the one who first encouraged me to um, to study for the NSCA, the National Strength and Conditioning Association exam. And so I took a couple of years off my life and I did that and I studied for it and I passed it. And I know that that's one that you've been involved with as well. What what certifications do you hold or have you held in the past um, from, from them or from other agencies? Okay. Well, I started like everybody here in BC. I started getting, I, I got certified through the BCRPA because it was pretty much the only game in town. But I wanted more. I wanted something better. And uh, through being employed where I was and working with people involved in the sports and working with my my mentor, who was a wonderful guy named Wagner Ruley. I'm going to give him a shout out. I might even send this to him. I haven't heard from him for a while. Um, I just got lucky. And Wagner was certified through the NSCA. And he, he was the one who encouraged me to do it or do something like that. And he said, get more and opened up this totally different world. You know, I'm working like in a place with a high performance department and athletes and, and stuff like that. And the standards were incredibly high. And so that's what kind of spurred me on to go with the NSCA and do the tactical strength conditioning. Obviously wanted to work with first responders. And I was one of the first eight in Canada to get certified in that particular one. And so that's kind of what led me to get certified through that. So I got rid of my BCRPA certification. And then of course I'm with the CFES who I teach for, which is an ever evolving. What I love about the CFES is they're constantly trying to be better and improve. And uh, that's been very, very good. And what I like about the CFES, they go, uh, they stated in their textbook. So let's say you get certified through them. And they said, after you've done this and you've had some experience, go get something better. They tell them to. Yeah. Oh, it's great. They said, you might want to consider if you want to stay in this career of upgrading to, to something. And I thought that, that that took a lot of courage for them to do that. And so I, I really respected that with CFS. So that's part of the reason, you know, I'm on the board. I'm one of the skills assessment advisors with them. They're, we're always trying to improve. So I think that's wonderful. Well, that's great. They, they've really made a name for themselves. I think they were just starting up when I was going through personal trainer school. And, um, and of course, as you know, I was with the BC Rex and Park Association as well. And then um, when I moved out to Alberta, that's when I pursued the NSCA because I just thought I wanted something across the board, uh, international. international. Yeah, but I remember the CFES, so Canadian Federation of Exercise Science. Uh, Canadian Fitness Education Services. Canadian Fitness Education Services. Wow, nailed that one. Good one, Shona. <laughs> um, the CFES has been really proactive, and you've always had really good things to say about them. I know they've always tried to provide really excellent education for trainers. And, that yeah, and they're constantly trying provide. to improve. Which That's is the, one of the big differences is yeah. they're constantly updating things. They're constantly trying to make things better. And then the, one of the great benefits, and I will always be grateful to the Olympic Global for this, is we were trained by the company is now known as Exos. But when we did it with them, they were called Athletes Performance. Now, that's not a certification. It's kind of a continuing ed. And I... I got so lucky. So in 2011 and 2012, the Oval brought in athletes performance to train us. And this is the best training on earth. They, it was started by Mark Verstegen, the director of the NFL Players Association. And I cannot say enough good. Now I always disclaimer here because I recommend this to my students as well. 
I get nothing from them. I get no kickback. I have no commission. I have no financial interest or anything in anything that they do. Um, but these are the best programs. Now, during the pandemic, uh, I've done everything with them in person and online now. I've done all their programs. I cannot recommend them highly enough. And during the pandemic, because I've done everything with them, they gave me a discount on the one remaining course I hadn't done. And it was called uh, the Applied Neuroscience of Peak Performance because they have a neuroscientist on staff. I thought, eh, it doesn't really appeal to me. Oh, my gosh, Shona. One of the best courses I've taken in my life. It sounds like I an highly amazing. recommend it. Yeah. Wow. That sounds like an amazing course. What's the name of it again? The Applied Neuroscience of Peak Performance with Dr. Ray Sugarman. Uh, it should be a prerequisite for anyone becoming a trainer. It is, I've reviewed it, I don't know how many times since I took it. It's very heavy. It's all about psychology. Ah. It is beyond brilliant. I tell all my students, you need to take this course. I will 100% look that up because that is definitely right up my alley. Oh my God, Shona, it is absolutely, um, it, it just, they, these people are the best in the business. Like these people, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best training in the world. Uh, it will change everything you do. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to the Oval for giving that to me. Um, I will always be grateful to them because it just changed everything. You've always spoken very highly about what was then Athletes Performance and what is now uh, Exos. Exos, so, TeamExos.com. TeamExos, right. TeamExos.com. You've always spoken very highly about their education, so that's really great. I'm, I'm going to put that one on my list for sure, and anybody who's, I feel like that's something where, trainer or not, that that's just a really, it would be a really interesting course. Well, the thing, you, you just, you know, I, I don't want to eat up time here, but one of the big challenges I found in teaching for so many years, and again, that's my favorite thing to do, is with a lot of the students, and again, you know, we were talking before we started recording about how the industry is, has changed and, you know, it's evolving and stuff like that. One of the big things I find with younger people who aren't entering this industry in the numbers that they used to is they don't have those soft skills, the psychological skills or the ability to interact. And you and I have talked about this, I remember, over the years. They don't have, they just don't have it. You need to know how to deal with people. You need to know how to elicit the right responses. And my mentor, Wagner, from that day to this, I, I was so lucky to meet someone like him. He told me, Ryan, we don't train the body. We train the brain. It's true. It it's is true. true. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm sorry. All the education in the world is going to do you no good. When I, when I very first, so years before I met you and I was just teaching group fitness in Edmonton and the guy, this uh, company called Soldiers of Fitness, and we were running around in the River Valley carrying heavy stuff in the middle of winter. And people loved it. And and we trained it very similarly to an, an army platoon on basic training where they they worked as a team together to accomplish this fitness mission. And, and by way of that, they improved their fitness. We did a lot of running. And, but one of the things that we really tried to do was play on the teamwork and you can do it kind of attitude. And one of the guys said to me one day, and he's, he's been a long time friend of mine. He said, you know, he's like, we're not teaching fitness. He's like, we're teaching people. And people came out of that, the 10 or so year run, the soldiers of fitness had lifelong friends. They became completely different people in that wonderful. environment because it gave them, it gave them something, it gave them a community and that plays into the psychological part of it that, you know, they, they really, they became better people because of this group. And, and it was amazing to watch. I've never seen anything. It is amazing. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean is there is no feeling like that. Um, when, when you see that, that, that kind of a transformation and that's one of the, that's one of the, the great things about, and that's why you do it. And it goes beyond money or anything else. If you're doing this for money, do, go do something else. You know, seriously, go do something else. Um, but but those connections with people and seeing them grow, it's their journey, not yours. You get it. You get it. You always got it. For me, that's the gratifying part of, of being a trainer is to see to seeing the transformation with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk a bit more about like the actual fitness stuff um, and, and some training stuff. <laughs> I know this is you. We could talk about all these things for hours. We might have to have a round two at some point. You are a huge proponent of strength training, um, as am I, and oh, you're yeah. also a huge proponent of kettlebells. I have a clear memory of asking you how I could up my barbell game, and you said go learn kettlebells. And I'm sure I looked at you with a very confused look, but it has proven to be some of the best advice I've gotten. Can you riff on that a little bit? Kettlebells, barbells, 
where could someone start if they haven't done much of either places that oh. they could take a look? Well, right now, um, broad question. Yeah, it's a broad question, but the the it but it comes down to a very simple answer. Is um, and this is and it's not my quote. I have to give credit to Exos for this, but it's a quote that has stuck with me and resonated. Was the simple things done savagely well? Oh, I and like so that. I, you know, people. You always want your version of yourself out there, but people see you in a totally different way. So I'm always known as like a kettlebell guy. Like I only use kettlebells and that's not true. I use barbells. I use dumbbells. I use them all the time. But what I have found through experience and always trying to seek out people smarter than me, and it's usually not that hard, is kettlebells. There's something about them that really works with biomechanics really well. Like, okay, the, the example that I use is working with a senior. Like I'm training an 81 year old guy right now, wonderful guy. And the, the kettlebells for some reason don't intimidate an older person like barbells and weights and stuff do. And it's so much easier to get them to do what you need to get them to do. Like teach a squat pattern, teach, teach a hip hinge, those basic movements that, you know, the list of things that people need to do in terms of improving their fitness, whether they're 18 or 81 is a very small list. Everybody needs to squat. Everybody needs to hinge. Everybody needs to row vertical, horizontal, it, 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 you know, and there's degrees of intensity, depending who it is, there's degrees of sets of reps. But if you're talking about kettlebells, yeah, I use them because they work faster than anything I know of in terms of just strength. And I, I mean, you've seen it yourself. If you want to get somebody strong, grab a kettlebell. It just bang. And the other thing, if you want to talk just vanity or aesthetics, the best leg and glute development, men or women, that I've ever seen comes from kettlebells. It rivals anything I've ever seen with a barbell. Now, why that is, I don't know. Eyewitness evidence and anecdotal evidence are the worst form of evidence. <laughs> but sometimes the most accurate. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like I had this guy that I don't know if he was in the class with you, but years and years ago, and I hadn't seen him for a while, and he was working in a gym, and he came up to me, and I go, buddy, don't take this the wrong way, but your ass looks amazing. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I took your advice and I started like experimenting with kettlebells and he couldn't believe it. And in terms of glute development, I'm, do you follow Brett Contreras? I don't. I know the name though. Okay. He's really there's big there's on glute development. Follow, um, he's one of them. And he wrote an article about how he felt heavy kettlebell swings were superior to deadlifts. Interesting. And he backed it, like he had the science and stuff to back it up. And it was a great article. And... I, I, my take on it is I don't know. Like I can't say definitively because I love them both. I think deadlifts with a barbell are a fantastic thing. I love them. My favorite I, exercise. Yeah, it's one of my favorite my exercises. Favorite. But the kettlebell swing is probably my all-time favorite exercise. It really is an amazing exercise for sure. And for everything. For everything, yeah. And kettlebells, of course, maybe, I don't know why they might not be as intimidating. I mean, they come, sometimes they come in a smaller package. They're easy to hold on to with a nice little handle on them. I, I am a big fan of kettlebells as well. And I feel like I just always need to add more to my gym just so that I have them. Have you found like teaching somebody how to do a goblet squat with a kettlebell is just so much easier? So easy. It is yeah. so easy. It makes sense to them. They've yeah. got something tactile to hold on to. Um, it's got enough weight that it can counterbalance them and not too much weight that it offsets them. And the bar indeed can be intimidating for a lot of people because yeah. of the leverage behind it. It's not that it's a, you know an unweighted bar in the grand scheme of things is not particularly heavy for most people, depending on it's where awkward, but it is, it's very awkward to use. If you've never used one before, it's very awkward. Let's talk nutrition because you said earlier on, and of course, We've talked about this as well, but I want to I want to talk nutrition because I want to hear your end of things. How do you approach nutrition in general? Do you approach it differently for uh, quote training for anything versus day to day life? Is it the same across the board? Well, of course, as you know, like I you know I can only give limited advice on nutrition because of my scope of practice. I mean, NSC is a little bit different. I can only give general. Uh, advice to a client but if you're talking about me myself oh my god let's talk about just you yourself i'm not talking about oh anybody. god oh but where, how do you well, approach things from your own from your own personal 
you know yeah, that like, the last three years since we came out of the pandemic and and i was talking earlier about how like business in terms of teaching just exploded and it's been great but i've been working incredibly hard for the last three years ever since we opened up it's been the best time of my career to be honest i've, I've just been having a blast but i've been working incredibly hard so you know that when you get really busy one of the first things to go is your nutrition and you maybe don't make yeah you don't make the best choices three days a week i go meatless oh wow okay yeah the brown rice lentils like tonight uh, we'll be having that with an egg white omelet with mushrooms and spinach or some variation thereof it sounds so delicious i'll be right over <laughs> <laughs> Walk on a plane. um and then every morning no matter what it's always oatmeal with a big scoop of protein and like bananas or a lot of berries a green supplement always no matter where i am in the world by the way even when i'm in europe i take like my oatmeal uh, i don't like instant oatmeal but you know the lesser of two evil with me but it's always steel cut mm -hmm. um no matter where i am and i've got to have my protein in the morning or i will tell you i just can't get through my day because you know a lot of times i'm up at five in the morning four days a week at the oval till about two race home prep my notes teach on zoom six to ten and do it all over again the next day holy smokes that's a full day yeah. so i take in supplementation i yeah i take a little ginseng helps okay. like you wouldn't believe really um i'll have a protein drink after i teach my athletic conditioning class and that helps a lot i notice my sleep's better that i i've really upped my protein and that helps because you know that sometimes when we get really busy we may have a tendency to not make the best choices like i'm going to grab a huge cinnamon bun because i want the sugar and the fat mm. just to keep going of course yeah, it's trainer hazard uh, you talk to any trainer who's busy they do that you know what i mean i, I absolutely know and of course if, if you want to you know sort of historical slash biological reason if i'm being chased by a bear um, <laughs> I, want, I want short fast energy this is going to get me the heck out of dodge in a very big hurry the trouble is is that in day-to-day -day life my body sometimes can't distinguish between no you're just stressed you're not actually being chased by a bear <laughs> but your body doesn't know the difference reason, yeah. why we deflect to the simple carbohydrates and the easily digestible sugars and things like that because it is quick energy and our body's like no 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 we need this right now because you need to get your life out of there so that you still have a life and it doesn't quite distinguish that modern life does not usually entail being chased by a bear but you know you're exactly right like the fight or flight right like you gotta you gotta have fuel like daddy needs fuel right <laughs> And for me, you know, I've been, you know, like I said, uh, you would love this. And I, I tell the students this and you can relate to this because I've been so busy. And again, saying this, I'm incredibly grateful. Like I'm 60 years old and the work is just pouring in. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. I'm, I'm grateful for that. I don't take that for granted for one second, but I have to organize my life with military precision. Yes. So today's kind of like a half day. I'm going to the one gym, but tomorrow morning, I just finished teaching, of course, so I'm not teaching, but when I'm teaching up at five, I know exactly what time I'm leaving the house. My lunch is ready. My breakfast is ready. My clothes are laid out. I know exactly how many minutes it'll take me to walk to the bus stop. I know exactly how long it takes to get to work. The second I walk through the doors of work, I'm on. I got to work. Then I'll run downstairs from the floor, teach an athletic conditioning class. I might get called the odd time and it happens quite frequently to sub a class at the last minute because somebody couldn't make it in. And I, I've got to have my lunch ready. I've got to have my protein drink. I've got to make sure I've got the right supplementation. I got to be so focused and so with it. Like I make lists, not every night, but I, I, I make lists a lot and my life doesn't function. So in terms of nutrition, I try to make healthy choices wherever I can. I'm not always successful, but I don't beat myself up about it. I just I do what I have to to get through my day. Um, and today was good nutrition wise. And today wasn't so good, but tomorrow will be better. But like I said, the oatmeal, uh, dark berries. Uh, I try to follow a little bit of a blue zone diet. Next week, I'm actually changing something. Uh, have you ever been reading? You've been reading about the blue zones. I've not. Tell me more about this. OK, blue zones are where pockets all over the world where people have lived to be on, be beyond a hundred years old. And they all have a couple of things in common. And the, the common things is they don't retire and they look at the diet and the nutrition. And there's 
a lot of like dark berries, um, a lot of beans, um, certain factors in certain areas, red wine. Excellent. Yeah, which is the only alcohol I drink, by the way. I don't drink alcohol other than red wine. That's the only thing I'll touch. Yeah, I don't drink anything. Even when I'm in Mexico, I won't drink anything like tequila. I never touch it. I can't have it. Oh, wow. um, but they talk about these things, and they found the healthiest breakfast in existence is from Costa Rica, Gallo Pinto, I think. And it's like rice and beans with like uh, a yam or sweet potato. Oh, or so, you've got, so you've got a complete amino acid profile right there, and it's filling, and it has a lot of complex carbs to get you through your morning. Yeah, so I'm gonna start having that. For, I'm gonna pack that for lunch next week. I'm gonna give it an experiment. So I'm I'm gonna have my oatmeal in the morning because, like I said, I have the dark berries and stuff, which is one of the common things, and uh, protein always. But I'm gonna try having that for lunch and see how I feel because we've been doing a lot of sandwiches. You know, we we kind of got into the habit with the pandemic, and it, it kind of led on from that. We'll always have sandwiches and the white bread thing, which is delicious. It is so bad. Of, you know, Carlos looks at me, he goes, Oh no, fucking sandwiches again. You know. <laughs> oh. So we'll uh yeah, so I'm gonna give it an experiment to see how I feel and uh try to be a little bit healthier, you know, and getting up there. So I gotta try and look up for myself. I want to hear how you how you like it because that sounds delicious. And I'm like, oh maybe it does. I'll try it for lunch one of these days. <laughs> On the flip side, is there some like totally unhealthy and delicious food that's just your like your weakness we've all got them so it's okay no judgment here my go-to would be in the morning like when i'm at work i always at five after nine exactly i'll have a cappuccino i have my two mm -hmm. cups of coffee when i wake up okay you know do all that have breakfast and when i get to work after we sorted everything out figuring out how the day is going maybe i'll do a consult or train a client what have you but generally five after nine i go downstairs and i'll buy a cappuccino and sometimes i just love a cinnamon bun it's just the best, especially on a cold morning. You know, I'm sitting there with my coworker, and you know, we're doing our work. But I like having that, and so I guess that would be my my evil go to. <laughs> they also make these scones with cranberry and white chocolate, and Ooh. yeah, I've had those. But then I figure I'll burn it off in an hour. <laughs> you probably will, knowing you. <laughs> I got to go down and teach the athletic conditioning class, so I'll burn it off. Yeah. You've mentioned a couple of different supplements. Um, I don't ever think of you as much of a a gear guy but is there any gear or particular supplements that you swear by that that is part of your sort of your daily oh, yeah. routine or anything like that ginseng ginseng okay i mentioned that earlier and that's interesting because that ginseng started out a little while ago as being a popular supplement i know i've tried it i haven't gone back to it but um tell me more about this how you're liking it well i i really so on a long day like i said when i'm teaching at night and i'm working in the morning and you know running around and sometimes i'll teach two group fitness classes now keep in mind you know i'm i'm a 60 year old man um i've still got energy to burn i mean yeah but i'm i'm a realist so it gives me and I only take it if it's a really long day. Like, I don't take it every day. I take it when I kind of need to. And what it does is mental sharpness. It gives me even more energy than I've already got, which is saying something. Do you need certain things? I take a, I take an over 55 multivitamin. Yeah. I take my fish oil. I take a probiotic every day. I'll take magnesium and a little bit of zinc before I go to bed, ZMA. Um... I take, uh, but on days when it's like, okay, this is, you know, this is a big day, which I love, but I'll take a little ginseng and it really helps. It gives me sustained energy throughout the day without the jitters. You got to be careful with your coffee consumption of that. You can sometimes interact, but I, I haven't really found that. Um, but it, it really, it helps mentally, uh, physically. Um, and I only take a half of one, just that little bit of an edge that I need. And it really, it helps tremendously. It, it okay. really helps me. Talk to your nutrition professional, Always. talk to your doctor, whatever, to see if it's right for you. What That's not a recommendation. Uh, let me, I'm only talking about what I do. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and that's um, for anybody viewing out there. This is something with, uh, sorry about my cat. Uh, something within the personal trainer industry is that unless you've got a separate nutrition certificate of some form, you are bound to recommend the Canada Food Guide 
And so yeah. anything else is outside of our scope of practice. We can talk about what we do that might be different outside of that. And then it's up to anybody else to do their due diligence and their homework and find out if it's the right thing. Exactly. And that's my disclaimer. I'm only talking about what works for me. You, you need to talk to a qualified nutritionist about whether you actually need supplementation or not. Absolutely. And, and your GP, if they're part of the equation as well. Yes. Right, because they can, they can. If you have a good one, they'll point you in the right direction and they'll push. But that's interesting yeah. on the ginseng. I've uh, I've heard that ginseng sort of makes you feel more of whatever you feel. So that if you're already feeling happy, it will enhance that. But if you're feeling sad, it will, may also enhance that. Now I'm not a scientist, so I don't quote me on that. I, I wouldn't know, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely do some research on that. Yeah, I've but never found never, that. Never found that. Okay, that's great to hear. That's really great to hear. As we wrap up, is there any, is there anything else that you would like to tell um, anybody watching or listening? Um, that you haven't already said that might inspire them to level themselves up from a fitness or a strength training perspective? Yes. Okay. It, this happens a lot. Um, mo okay, so here's a big myth that I would like to explore. Motivation doesn't work. Agreed. You agree. You know what? Do oh, you're, you and I are still on the same page. <laughs> I know. Discipline does. And I was talking to a young girl. She wanted to lose some weight and stuff. And I said, okay, you know, how can I help? And she goes, well, I hate this. I said, okay, first thing, no negative self-talk. Don't put yourself down. Don't allow it. Okay. Know what you're worth. And the second thing she goes, but you know, it is, it is. And I said, she goes, I have trouble motivating myself. I said, don't motivate yourself. And she was just like, her head was going to explode. She goes, what do you mean? Don't motivate myself. I said, show up anyway, whether you feel like crap with you, just show up. Because if you show up at the gym, you are going to do something. So don't get wrapped up in, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, yeah, have a plan. But don't think about the plan. Just think about showing up. Motivation, you know, they talk about smart goals. Nobody thinks about, you know, they talk about the, I think it's Dan John talks about the 100-yard goal, and everybody loses sight of the 20-yard goal, the 30-yard goal. Just show up. Uh, have you read David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me? I have not. No, oh, not. read it. Oh, okay, okay. I read I read a few other along those those lines that have basically say, you know, discipline. Can't hurt me. It's, and he goes... Okay. He goes, I feel like crap, do it anyway. Nice. And that is, oh, that book is a really good book because it's, you know, like I can be tired and everything. And I go, yeah, do it anyway. Like I, I tried, I tell the students this just quickly. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was really tired. I couldn't sleep three or four hours of sleep. It was raining. It was miserable. I went into work and I had to teach two classes and I didn't want to. Like I was just, ugh. Second, that door open. Good morning. Welcome to the old. Do it anyway. It's amazing how you can change how you feel, at least temporarily, if you're willing to bring that kind of energy with you. Yeah. And not everybody can do it. Um, it's part of discipline. You just Absolutely. do it anyway. It's like tough. You, you sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Well, that's never been my style. It's never going to be my style. You just get in there and you just do it. Simple, simple advice. Just show up. That's great advice. I love it. I, I also wanted to, you didn't mention it, but I um, I remember you said it in one of my classes and I've heard you say it since then regarding getting education and you'll, you'll, you'll say it better than I do about spending, spending the best money you have on the best education you can get. You remember, I say that, all, I still say that. Is that how you say it normally? I still say that. I, and it's the honest truth. Okay. So I'm a 60 year old man. I, I have had a really long career. And I've had a very successful career. Yeah, there's been bumps and twists and turns, and that happens in this industry, regardless of who you are. But uh, overall, I've had an, an enormously successful career. And, you know, sitting there at the age of 60, reflecting on that a little bit is, I think part of it is the continuing education. Absolutely. I'm just restarting with the NSCA right now. I've got like one or two more things to do for the next three years. Maybe the last time I do it, I don't know. Um, but I've, again, I've been lucky working where I do. But I've invested a lot in getting the best education that is out there. There's a lot out there that's really good. And I really think it has made a difference in terms of my career longevity. I really do. It's the end of the recertification cycle for the NSCA. So I'm in. I'm in oh, you the same? Well. Yeah. It's, I think it's the same for everybody because mine, mine research at the end. And so I've been working through. Um, How much more do you have to do? I've actually got all my CEUs for this year. I would say, what are the best ones you can get? Well, anything from Exos. Dan John, of course, He's and great. anything that he offers is really good. You can subscribe to Dan John University. Anything from Mike Boyle, Strength and Conditioning, really, really good. Uh, his video on doing the kettlebell swing is great. Uh, who else? There's a lot out there that's really, really good. Oh, 
precision nutrition. Yes. I know so many, I've never done it myself. I know so many people who've done it. I have never, ever heard one single negative comment. Well, that's great to hear. rare. They have. And they if you want to be able to give nutritional advice like we were talking about, I have never heard one single negative comment about it, ever. I, that's I would. I, I have not taken their program. I've done some, some of their free stuff just to check it out. I would say that overall, that's a great assessment. I've been really happy with what they recommend and how they present it because it makes it easy for people. Yeah. That, that could be a whole different, we could spend a whole nother hour on that. Yeah, we could, I, we it, could, it, but maybe in the future. <laughs> uh, so what's what's next for you? And you, you mentioned you may, maybe this will be the last time you renew your NSCA, maybe not. What do you think's next for you in the fitness industry? Well, you, you're going to find this out now. You, please feel free not to answer, but I'm going to ask you, how old are you now? How old am I? I am 47. I turned 47 in October. Okay, so 50's coming up. 50's coming up, yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Ask me in three years. <laughs> okay, well, the thing is, like, my life is pretty, you know, my life is pretty sweet. My life is pretty charmed. Um, my best friend and his wife were over last night. We had drinks with them. And he's a year behind me. So I turned 60 in July. There was a big surprise party, which I did not want, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> but something really hit me about it. And it was, you know, there were people there and, you know, my brothers and sisters are older than me and, you know, friends and things. And the thought hit me and this is, oh my God, this is terrible to say, but I go, oh my God, who's going to be here in 10 years? It's it really hit me and not in a bad way. It just made it much more precious. What I'm noticing now, um, this is more of a personal thing, not so much related to training, but maybe it does is I keep going, well, you know, how much time is left? And, you know, I noticed that my friends, every time I see them, they seem to have aged more. And then the thought dawns on you, well, holy shit, they're probably thinking the same thing about you. And, <laughs> you know, to be realistic, right? And so there, there's, there's a certain amount of preciousness and, and stuff like that, that I guess I'm reflecting on, you know, thinking about my parents and stuff, and it's like they seem farther away now this year, especially at Christmas. I always get a little reflective at Christmas. The only time of the year I allow myself to live in the past. I, my life, I don't live in the past, but at Christmas, I do. And it seems so far away now. And that's kind of sad for me. Like, it, it's it's so long ago, a lot of stuff. It's so long ago. I got my bank statement, and I got a senior's discount. Uh-huh. Well, and yeah, and you know, it, it kind of goes... Well, you know, in my brain, I'm a nine-year-old with ADD and a generous allowance. I got asked for a senior's, like, are you eligible for a senior's discount? And, you know, you go, well, how, you know, but then, then I go, well, of course I am, you know, and you accept it gracefully. And, <laughs> and yeah, I do. And I'm not trying to be younger. I'm not doing it. But at the same time, I'm teaching two athletic conditioning classes a week, three athletic conditioning classes a week i'm teaching a strength program i'm teaching an intro to strength program i'm running around like a maniac i'm in the best shape of my life yeah i probably want to change a few things but i'm doing things at an incredibly high level how much longer i don't know i feel fine uh but yeah that's been kind of you know like my god how much time is left and i don't want to you know we, we both talk about being very direct and straightforward if you thought i was before that is nothing compared to how I am now because I just don't want to waste time. I don't so. want to waste time is precious. It's the most precious commodity, more so than money. Brian, those are amazing words of wisdom. I look forward to seeing where you go in the next few years and if you continue with fitness or if you just decide that you're going to travel for the rest of your life and um, enjoy good food and art. I'm going to keep working. I, I, I retirement, you're, I, you know, I think about it. that, you know, how much longer do they want me to work where I'm working? And they made it clear they'd like me to stick around. So I, you know, I make a lot of money for them. Um, and yeah, it's like I said, I'm giving up the one-on-one -on -one training at one of the facilities I work at the end of this year, but I definitely want to expand on the teaching and we've got some big plans for 2024, do more things like this. Um, so yeah, who cares? Like, just keep going. Awesome. I love it. Great advice to finish up on. Ryan, we'll, we'll wrap up for now. And um, again, thanks so much for all of this. And well, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. It was a ton of fun. And uh, we'll, we'll do this again soon. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching this week's episode. And I really hope that you enjoyed that conversation with Ryan Delaney as much as I enjoyed recording it. 
If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And please remember to share this episode with a friend that you think might enjoy it as well. Plus, remember to connect with Jim and Kitchen on the web, Instagram, or Facebook at jimandkitchen.biz. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I can't wait to see you again in the next episode. Bye.